Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on types of internet connections. Today we're going to be talking about dial-up internet connections, then we'll move on to DSL internet connections, and then we'll conclude with other types of internet connections. And with that, let's go ahead and begin today's session. Of course, we're going to begin by talking about dial-up internet connections. Now, dial-up utilizes plain old telephone service, POTS service, through the public switched telephone network, the PSTN. Now, dial-up requires the use of a modem to transmit data as an analog signal over the twisted pair plain old telephone service lines. Your max theoretical speed in the United States using dial-up is 56 kilobits per second. Now, back in the day, 56 kilobits was pretty fast, but man, is that slow now. Now, a type of dial-up service, but different, is the Integrated Service Digital Network, the ISDN line. This is a digital point-to-point dial-up wide area network technology that utilizes the public switch telephone network. You can achieve up to approximately two megabits per second networking on a primary rate interface, a PRI interface. Now, a primary rate interface uses what are called B channels. It, as a matter of fact, it uses 23 of them and it uses one D channel. They're kind of bundled together and that's how you get up to two megabits per second networking. Most often, a primary rate interface is not what companies use. They will use what's called a basic rate interface, a BRI. Now, these are deployed at multiples of 128 kilobits per second. Now, a BRI uses two B channels at 64 kilobits per second each, one for data and one for voice, and one D channel, which operates at 16 kilobits per second, which is used for call setup and link management. Now, you can bundle basic rate interfaces together to achieve more speed. An ISDN connection requires the use of a terminal adapter, or TA, for the connection to the end node. It looks like a modem, but it's not a modem. Now, ISDN connections are more expensive than dial-up and not as capable as digital service line, but they can be used when DSL is not available. And with that, let's move on to DSL internet connections. Now, DSL stands for Digital Subscriber Line. It's a digital internet connection using the plain old telephone service as the transmission media. It creates a dedicated digital line between the endpoint and the network supplied by the internet service provider, the ISP. It's an always-on type of internet connection. DSL carries voice and data. Now, filters are put in place so that you can get a clear voice channel, but DSL does carry both. Now, the speed of the DSL connection varies depending upon the ISP and the type of DSL service that you're paying for. As a rule, the ISPs do charge for the amount of bandwidth that they provide to the premise. Now, there are two main flavors of DSL, and we're going to start by talking about ADSL, asynchronous DSL. With ADSL, download speeds are faster than upload speeds. It's usually more cost effective for the small office, home office environment than SDSL. Now, SDSL stands for synchronous DSL. Download and upload speeds are the same. Often when SDSL is deployed, it's used in conjunction with a leased T1 line. Now, as a rule, SDSL costs more than ADSL. And in most SOHO cases, ADSL works just fine. Now let's move on to some other internet connections. Now cable is a broadband connection to the location. It's delivered by the cable company using the cable company's own network. They typically offer more bandwidth for less cost than DSL. It's also an always-on connection to the internet. Now the way it works 
The cable signal is delivered to what's called the head end. This is where all cable signals are received and the signals are processed and formatted and then transmitted to the distribution network. The distribution network is a smaller service area that's served by the cable internet service provider. The distribution network architecture can be composed of fiber optic cabling, coaxial cabling, and or a hybrid fiber coaxial cabling network, an HFC network. But the final distribution to the home or office is usually through a coaxial cable. Now, unlike DSL, the bandwidth that the cable ISP provides is shared by the distribution network. This can lead to increased latency and congestion during peak usage times as everybody is surfing the internet. Now let's move on to fiber optic internet connections. This is using light to transmit data and voice at a higher bandwidth. Fiber optic cables are used to make the connection to the ISP's network. The fiber optic cabling allows for higher bandwidth, which means that the end user is granted more and faster internet access. Quite often, fiber optic connections will not only carry internet, but they'll also carry telephone connections as well as telephone service, and they do so with ease. However, it does tend to be the most expensive option for connecting to the internet. Like DSL and cable, fiber optic connections are a type of always-on connection to the internet. Now that concludes this session on types of internet connections. We talked about dial-up internet connections, then we moved on to DSL internet connections, and we concluded with some other types of internet connections. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm looking forward to doing another one.